Now that you understand the basics of a graph and its traversal techniques, it is time that you move on to some of the intermediate concepts. And before you move ahead, you must make sure that you know how to correctly implement a weighted graph and a directed graph. So in this particular video, I want to focus how you can code such a graph. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, we will gonna review what we already know and then see what problems do we have with it. Going forward, we will see the code to define a graph edge and then using that graph edge, we are gonna implement the graph data structure. Without further ado, let's get started. Up to this point, what all do we know about representing a graph? Let us say I have this sample graph in front of me and you have to represent it using an adjacency list. One way to do this will be that, okay, you can start off with some kind of an array or a list where your starting nodes are all of the vertices in your graph. And then you can just look how many neighbors does each of the vertices have? And then you can define linked lists. So this completes your adjacency list. This is now telling me that, okay, node two has three nodes, which are directly connected. And we can see this also over here, right? This representation solves a lot of problems for us. You can now traverse the graph. You can perform a BFS traversal and a DFS traversal. You can find out the degree of any node and there are so many operations you can do. You can also add edges and then remove edges. Also, you can handle directed edges over here. For example, let us say this edge between node two and node four, this becomes a directed edge. So what will this do? There is still a connection between node two to node four but there is no connection between node four and node two. So this will now go away, right? So this is how you are taking care of all the operations, but we want our design to be extendable. So where is actually the problem? You all know about weighted graphs, correct? Each of the edges has some weight associated with it. And this weight could mean anything. It could simply mean that going from node one to node two, will cost you four and going from node one to node five is going to cost you six. So how do you account for this weight when you are representing your graph in this particular manner? You can make an argument that your list node structure looks something like this. You have a certain value over here and then you have the next pointer. If you want a weight associated with it, what you can do is you can add additional value and then define the weight in this additional value over here. So now what will happen? Each of your node, they will have more values associated with it. But then how do you determine what is the cost when you're going from node one to node two, or what is the cost when you're going from node one to node five? So this will become a lot more confusing. And the problem becomes even worse because you have to encounter the weight in both the directions. So the weight between node one and node two is four and the reverse is also true. So when you're adding a weight over here, you will want to add a weight over here as well. And then handling all of this logic becomes a little bit complicated. So we need a better way to manage our graph and then efficiently perform all of the calculations that we want to do on it. So what we're going to do is we are going to slightly tweak how we represent a graph. We will still be using the adjacency list, but instead of using linked list, we are going to take the advantage of all of these edges that we are defining. What I'm going to do is I will define a graph edge. And as you know, an edge will have three different components. It will have a source. It will have a destination and it will have some weight associated with it. Correct. So now when you want to initialize this object, what do you do in your constructor? We will pass in three values, a source, a destination and a weight. And then we initialize our edge. So what we're trying to do over here is let us say I have a graph that looks like this. And now I want to initialize a edge between node one and node two that has the weight of four. So I will say something like new graph edge and then the source is one, the destination is two and the weight is four. So this is how I am defining one edge, correct? So what is basically happening is instead of a linked list, 
I am now defining a edge as an object. And in this object, I am defining the source. So my source is one. What is the destination? The destination is two. And then what is the weight? The weight is four. So this is how I am defining this particular edge, which is going from node one to node four. Similarly, you can define all of these edges one by one. And when you're working on the graph, you have some getter methods, which will assist you whenever you are working with all of your algorithms. So now if you define your edge like this, how does your adjacency list actually looks like? This is the sample graph that I have. And once again, for my adjacency list, what I do is I start off with an array that has all of my vertices, right? And for each of these vertices, instead of keeping a linked list, I am going to keep all the edges associated over here. So what does that mean? So let us go step by step. For the first edge, my source is one, my destination is two and the weight is four, right? So I create one object. And then since this edge is bidirectional, that means there is an edge between node two to node one as well. I will have one more object. And in this object, I am going to write down my source is two. My destination is one and the weight is four. Correct. So now I defined two edge objects. So this is how you are defining a undirected edge. You are going in both the directions. What happens if you have a directed edge like this one? Once again, we are going to create the object and then the force is five. The destination is three and the edge weight is eight, right? So this is how you are creating all of your edge objects. All of my objects are now ready. It is time that you place them in your adjacency list. For node number one, I have two edges, right? So I'm going to take them and put them in my adjacency list. What about node two now? Node two has two undirected edges and one directed edge. But this edge is from node four to node two and not the other way around. So put all the edge objects over here now. Similarly, you can now populate your entire adjacency list. Look at this representation now. This representation is now capturing all of the information that we already had. And now you have the information of the weights as well. So if you want to know that, okay, for node number five, what are the edges that I have? You can simply look at all of your objects in here and that will give you all the details. So this kind of a representation will help us with all of the future graph algorithms. So how do you go about implementing this now? So over here, I have this class weighted graph and we will try to fill in all the details. First of all, what is the most important components that we know? We know that, okay, we will need the number of vertices and then you have to define the adjacency list. In your class constructor, what do you do? You will just ask that, okay, how many nodes does this graph have? So when you're initializing your weighted graph, what do you do? First of all, you fix your vertices and then you create a new array list based upon the number of vertices that you have. So what I'm doing over here is I am creating an array with all the number of vertices. Just notice that this is the target graph that we have to reach. So what we're going to do is we are going to say something like graph is equal to new weighted graph and then we will pass in five. So that will create this new adjacency list, which has five vertices. Correct. Also for each of these vertices, we run a for loop and then initialize a new array list, which will store all of my graph edges. Notice that the type of this array list is a graph edge that we just created a while ago. Correct. Let us now look at one of the edges. Let us say I want to add this edge, the edge between node four and node seven. This is a directed edge and it has a weight of seven. So how do we do this implementation? I have a method that takes in the source, the destination and then the weight. So the first thing that you do is you create a edge and this edge has all these three parameters, correct? So you passed in source as four, destination as two and the weight as seven. So this will now create an edge, but you have to add this edge in your adjacency list, right? And where do you add it? 
you will add it in node number four, right? Because this is where it is getting directed from. So what I do, I say adjacency list and I'm looking at my source. My source is four. So I'm over here now. And then I add this edge in here. So this particular edge will get added over here as an object. Now, let us say I want to add an undirected edge between node 5 and node 1 and it has the weight of 6. So look at this implementation now. I have a method add undirected edge and once again it takes in three parameters, the source, destination and the weight. Since it is an undirected edge, you can have any of the nodes as the source and any as the destination. So let us say I pass in an argument, the source is 5, the destination is 1 and the weight is 6. So these are my three parameters. What do you do? First of all, you will have to make two edges. One edge will be between the source and the destination with the weight and then one edge in the reverse direction. So you will make one more edge between the destination and the source along with the same weight. And then you are gonna add both of these two new edges to both the source and the destination adjacency list. So right now your source was 5 and the destination was 1. So you will add an object over here and then you will add an object over here. So that is how you are gonna proceed ahead and then you can represent your entire graph just by using edges. And once you want to perform operations, you can just call the method get vertices and it will return you your complete adjacency list which is representing the graph. I would also recommend that you check out my complete code on GitHub which has additional method to remove an edge as well. Or you can also try to do it as a homework on your own. You will find some more examples in the given code also. I hope now you have a better understanding about how you can implement a weighted graph and a directed graph. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that graphs as a data structure is a huge topic. And as you know, there are different types of graphs. So this is just a journey. Going forward, we might have to implement even a generic graph where the node types can change. You can either have string nodes or you can have integer nodes or they can be of variable type. So it is a journey and we will keep on expanding our graph data structure as we require it. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or have you found any other innovative ways by which you can implement a weighted graph and a directed graph? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos to simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And remember, as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments. In the next set of videos, we will be actually using all of these weighted and directed graphs. So stay tuned and until next time, see ya.